Welcome all, uh, especially to obviously all my friends, um, young trainees, uh, medical students. How many residents are there? Just raise your hands. Very good. So uh, basically, um, um, the idea of boot camp, as Anita said, were basically for first, second year trainees and people who are interested in neurosurgery, interns, and medical students, obviously. And, um, Bringing boot camp to Pakistan, the idea was that when we are out in the war and you've got young trainees and they don't have a clue, it's not their fault. You know, we need to teach them. And I think it's important that we do that more and more and then teach basic stuff which is required. Okay. Um, also, um, it's actually sometime in the night for um, John Bennett, who uh, is live with us on Neurosurgical TV. Yeah. So hopefully um, you guys, um, if you miss something, you can go back and see this because this will be on YouTube um, from Neurosurgical TV. And this is coming live to uh, people who want to see it live. Um, th these actually are, this is not, these are not my slides. These are sl slides from Society of Neurological Surgeons Bootcamp. And basically, they uh, just go through why uh, and how and what we should be doing as a young trainee in the ward or a nurse or a person looking after these patients. Okay, so I need to point somewhere or what? You should be like a. Okay, I'll, I'll play from here. It's fine. No, no, I can add you. So why, what is professionalism? Obviously, a person needs to be highly educated, impressive, um, competence, autonomy, comfortable salary. You don't want to be having somebody who doesn't have money in his pocket worrying about what I'm going to eat later on. Um, creative and intellectually uh, challenging work, trust, strict, ethical, and moral standards. Professionalism obviously describes your um, ethical behavior. The uh, confidentiality is um, kept a duty not to abandon because of inability to pay. So putting the client's interest ahead, moral compass, work ethics and motivation, willingness to share in transmission of knowledge and values, uh, like what we are doing today, uh, positive attitudes towards the profession. And obviously the two most important thing uh, that we're gonna be talking about today is professionalism and interpersonal communication skills. Patient care, medical knowledge, system-based practice, and practice-based learning and improvement all come into this. So what is uh, professionalism? It's manifested through a commitment to carry out professional responsibilities, adherence to ethical principles, and sensitivity to a diverse patient population. Uh, can we measure it? Yes, it can be measured by our peers, um, on, by various evaluations of uh, clinical and operative, by rotation, and you can do that annually as well. And how, do, how can we measure it by seeing, are we adhering to our duty hours, um, getting um, nurses, uh, nursing interaction, patient interaction, um, how you dress, what's your demeanor, how you talk, um, the devotion to patient care, ethical decision making, and what are your contributions to the profession itself, and all that is important for us. And the essence of professionalism is obviously continuous self-improvement. What I wasn't doing right, how can I do it um, uh, better? <clears throat> and it's basically lifetime uh, learning. And you must read constantly. You must read systematically. You must master the field, that's important. You must read through your career. You must share your own ideas with other colleagues by teaching, speaking, and writing. And all that uh, comes into play in your professionalism. Uh, you will have bad outcomes, and they are sometimes unavoidable and perfection is unobtainable. we know that. So what is expected of you? Your very best, that's all. You can't do more than your very best, so you have to do um, your very best. Uh, you have to have honest acceptance of your results. You need to do the tracking of your morbidity and mortality, analyze them, report them, and obviously discuss how you can improve. Um, constant striving for improvement is important and practice-based learning. 
and to care about those who we care for. And that is very, very important. And if a patient knows that if you're on their side and if you care for them and you care what happened to them, they will forgive you and you will forget yourself. And so there'll be no burnout in these uh, professionalism because there will be problems. Honesty, even with patients after an error, yes, it's important. And always involve your superior or colleagues and they'll be able to help you in this. Supervision, that's the main goal. There's a hierarchy that runs. So it's just like in, in army where we have a hierarchy. So you've got a hierarchy like this. So you've got, you know, you've got an in medical student, intern, um, first year, second year, third year resident, chief resident, SR, consultant, and the chief. And if you don't follow this hierarchy, you will cause problems. Um, so when does supervision apply? Obviously in operating room, that's important for the key portion of the operation, for any portion in which you are not competent in dependency. For what? Until you are specifically cleared for independence. Uh, for decision making, anytime you don't know, ask. Anytime you aren't sure what's happening, ask. Uh, bosses don't want any surprises. You know, there are no surprises in this. Things your superior wants to know. If a patient got admitted, if there's significant change in status of a patient, if a patient is transferred to a different care level, for example, shifted to ICU or high dependency. If an operation is required, your boss needs to know. Anything that will change the OR schedule, your boss needs to know, otherwise he'll be very pissed off. Uh, you don't want to have an angry family. You know, if there's an angry family, you need to know. And uh, anything that you would want to know in their shoes, you would you need to call the boss. Um, the student, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. It's a Chinese proverb. Teacher is one who makes himself progressively unnecessary. So it's very, very important that you are able to teach um, stuff to your juniors that slowly and gradually you may not be required in that theater. So how are supervision and hierarchy related? There's the acquisition of competence, um, cognition, procedural, graduated autonomy, in which experience is the best teacher. So you stand, you watch, you teach them, you're happy, you get, you know, give them a little bit of the procedure and a little bit more and a little bit more. Ethical behavior, and if there's other problems, sit down, talk to them. Fatigue happens to all of us and it compromises patient safety, quality, and the health of the residents. And you see it all the time. People don't eat properly, people don't exercise, people, people are unfit and uh, unable to stand for a little while. So there are uh, two imperatives to fatigue. So it's regular compliance of what, how exactly it should be done, so how many hours you should be working, and quality and safety, self-monitoring, asking for help. Um, don't drive tiredness, it's not good for you. Um, patients hand off, there'll be time that you feel that you're real fatigued and that's the time that you just need to um, stay away from patient for a little while and you, know, you can talk to your bosses, they'd help you with that. And then, you know, obviously you can do a lot of leverage from the electronic medical records. What are the pearls? It's a long road, it's hard work. If you don't enjoy the process, it may be difficult to finish it. So it's important that you enjoy it. Hard work without talent is a shame, but talent without hard work is a tragedy. Um, what, what do we mean? You're all smart, you're all talented. We are asking for diligence and humanity. That's all, so that's all it takes. You're about to enter the most exciting profession in the world. How did you come to decide to be a neurosurgeon? Every neurosurgeon has a story, go and talk to them. Ask your peers to tell you their stories and you know that this is what we wanted to do. So neurosurgery is a community. We have got a chief, a program, a mentors, colleagues, patients, community, and a family, and that's all one family, and that's very important to remember. Ask yourself these questions. How many people enjoy what they do every day? How many people feel that they're making a positive contribution to the lives of the other human being every day? And ask a neurosurgeon the same question, and there'll be all stereotypical questions, and we know that. Almost, I mean, almost no neurosurgeons regret their decision. Nearly all are very happy with what they're doing. And it's a long program, and you need to be rest, well rested as well. Uh, when you're rested, obviously you look better. Uh, you learn better and you will stay healthier. And all these are important pearls to remember. Take care of yourself, spend time away from the hospital, be with your family, be physically active. Um, I can't say that for my residents, I'll make sure they stay here. Uh, don't be afraid to ask, ask questions, it's very important. Silence is often mistaken for, for understanding. Ask attending seniors, it's okay to say, I don't know. 
especially regarding a patient. Most of all, remember that sometimes you don't know when you don't know. So let's remember that. Uh, prioritize things. Um, you know, you need to know who are the sickest patients. Stay organized. Have a list. Be practical. Brain surgery is just really common sense. Nothing else. Prepare for cases. Uh, be rested. Read about the disease. Study. Understand the goals of the operation. Meet the patient if you can beforehand and afterwards. Accurate and timely communication up and down the chain of command is critical. There are three questions to answer to any question. Three answers to any questions. Yes, no, or I don't know. Think before you speak. Uh, don't speculate. Nothing substitutes for seeing the patient yourself repeatedly, if indicated. Experience is critical and precious. Always listen. You are not expected to know everything, but you're expected to learn every day. Always keep your composure. Avoid becoming argumentative with your superiors, peers, or others. Don't come with a problem. Come with solutions. Neurosurgery is defined by need and ability to get it done. So job has to be done. And then the buck really stops with you. So take one day at a time, and the time is now. So that's what you need to do. Better is possible. It does not take genius to take diligence. It takes moral clarity. It takes indigenity. And above all, it takes a willingness to try. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, no, everybody's prepared to be a neurosurgeon. Good.